recording, sharing. Okay. So, so let me let me begin by let me begin by saying that I am not very confident that you're going to go into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the adequate knowledge, knowing what to do. I'm not concerned that you don't have time. I'm concerned that most of you don't know what to do to finish this project. Reviews are not supposed to go this way. You need to watch others review, right? Taking advantage, being on a Thursday group is for you to take advantage that you have in during early week to know what to do so you can push forward so that today I can comment on a more complete draft. Does that make sense? Reviews are not to say, you know, I'm not on the stage so I don't have to make progress, I don't even have to listen to others, so I'm just gonna start on Thursday. Now you only have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you see your friends that are not here, that are not on Zoom, that are not in a good shape, text them. Text them to let them know that needs to hop on Zoom to watch the review. Otherwise they won't know what to do. The quality of the day submission, honestly, it should be two weeks ago. And compare your work to last year's, two years ago, this year's, I'm very concerned that most of you, your submission will be at C level and below. Okay? I know there's a lot of going on. I know it's a little too hard to be, okay, you guys are not doing great. You know, it's only three days left. But I hope today you really try to get some help early on. There's only one day left to get help, honestly, Friday, right? Where do you get that help? Our office hours are getting filled up. Your TAs are not able to comment on grading content the related, uh, the content related questions. And you kind of have to rely on yourself now or rely on the Zoom recording. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to do as much as I can, giving you comments so that you know what to do heading into the, the last three days. This is very limited that I can do at this time. Okay? I'm gonna get started with this. You do have contours. Um, let me draw a few lines just to check if so the 71, 72 contours, the contours on this side, on the left side, one line, this line is likely correct. And then you need to mirror that, okay? That's the 45 degree because you have a 2% slope and then 2% slope down to uh, the parking lot. So these angles, they are the same. They are the, they're 40 degrees. And these contours will need to be parallel to what you have here. Okay, so those are the contours for 71 and 72. And if this is 3.3%, I can check in a minute to see whether or not we are having the correct angle, which I'm confident that probably, probably not. Reason being, so we talked about what's what's the uh, three inch crown mean, right? Three inch crown is one fourth, meaning that I am at 69.275, uh, what, sorry, 70.75 here. And we're at 71.75 here. Meaning that if we, if we divide this pink line down here by four, okay? we are going to connect the correct would be at this location, it will be 71, okay? So when you are connecting here, that's likely not the same angle as what you have there, okay? It's close, 
but I'm not confident that your 71 is at the right location. So yes, your first thing is to verify the 71 um, contour is at the right angle, correct to 72, correct all these on the left side. And then, you know, I, I feel that I'm coming back to the week before Thanksgiving of commenting on what whether or not 72, the whole four houses having the same FFE, what does that mean for your slope of your walkway? Because of the lack of information on your plan, I'm not even sure that I can very I can I can comment on if this could work. Okay. Because I don't under I don't, I'm not sh I don't have the information where you intend to have steps, right? Where what's the what's the slope of the walkway that you you're designing for? What's the slope here? Where you intend to include steps? I'm not sure that those that that process is is grasped. Now, when you are determining, when you determine the TFFE and BFFEs are these numbers. Does that make sense? So I probably have repeated, well, if we reviewed 10 submissions on Tuesday, I repeated 10 times of how to do the contours in front of the buildings and how to do the contours in the parking lot. I'm not saying that, I'm just a little, I'm, I'm just a little concerned about, you know, having three days left from here, getting to the end, and product, it takes a lot of effort trying to catch up. And I'm not sure you're, you're using all the materials and resources that we have to try to catch up. There are so many similarities. There are so much redundancies between the submissions. Now, the reason why we asked people to be here to be on Zoom to watch others reviews is to solve the same problem question get to know the same process right it's not by going the going over the every one of the steps of everyone's submissions that you get this information okay so well we can go through that again that's no problem but going through that little thing again wouldn't help you get all of your remaining issues resolved. Okay, so you really, this is for everyone, okay? I'm, I'm not, this is not for individual. This is for everyone, for everyone. All these questions we must have gone through at least a dozen times. And you need to know how to get help if you happen to not be able to be here, okay? Is not, you know, us not requiring you to be here doesn't mean that you should not be here. Okay, okay. So, seventy-two. Are these uh, top FFEs and BFFEs calculated, or are they an estimation? Or it, did you specify? I just want them to be the seventy-two. I'm basically trying to understand if you have enough knowledge going into designing for the steps and ramps and the walkway slopes. Were the were, were these TFFEs and BFFEs calculated? So they're not, they're not calculated. Do you know how to calculate them? Okay, so calculating the FFEs. So I'm just gonna give you the shortcut. These two, if you don't calculate them, that's okay. These two, you need to calculate them. The reason being, there are two required accessible front porches meaning that you cannot have a single step in front of your house, okay? Meaning that you have to go from the uh, parking lot up the curb and then get to this unit, 
If you don't want this to be angled, that's okay too. You just need to provide a way for people to get up to this unit. If you wanna say, I just want my walkway to look like this, that's totally fine. So you do need to know what that spot elevation is, or you verify that these are the correct contours, okay? Using that contour, you will be able to calculate the spot elevations at the corner using a BC or a TC. So if my red lines here as the contours are the correct contours, here, my estimation, you need to calculate it. I would estimate it for it to be 71.8, for instance. That is my BC. And then my top of the curb, oh, okay. Uh, well, we'll get to that a little bit later. There's some discrepancy between your HP there and your 72 contours. Okay, so your TC would be 72.30, okay? Then um, based on that, your TFFP doesn't work. Reason being, I'm not going down. I need to go up to my house, okay? If your top of the curve is already above 72, your TFFE equal to 72.00, you are having negative drainage. So at this point, I see that your HP equals to 71.80, okay? Um, that requires you to measure if this is 50 feet. If this is a 50 feet and the 70 tick points, Ah, uh, I know now. Okay, so this is labeled correct, uh, incorrectly. So this is 69. That is 70. See, here you have a 68.50. So the next contour should be 69, 70, and 71. And then now your HV equals to 71.80. That makes sense. Okay, so those are not correct. And then if this one now becomes 70.80 and TC equals to 71.3, then your TFFE equals to 72 likely would work. Now, what you need to do is to calculate the slope here based on TC equals to 71.3 and your top, top FFE equals to 72, okay? 72, so this is likely a 2% slope based on estimation of the walkway being about seven, uh, 30, 35 foot. So this TFFE work, <clears throat> If, if this is somewhat mirrored, this one would work, but you likely would have a different slope that you will need to calculate, okay? Now you wanna say, okay, I just wanna keep all the FFE the same. They would work in this case, but this will require you to calculate the slope over here. Very likely you'll need steps here just because you are at a low elevation you're at a low elevation here. You're, you have a shorter walkway. So you wouldn't be able to raise as much as you did for the second unit. So in order to have the same TFFE, you would need a set of steps. Same thing here. We're at a lower elevation at about seven, uh, 69 point something. If we wanna get up to 72, you're likely will need to have steps, okay? So the first step is to correct the parking lot contours, uh, calculate your walkway slopes, decide how many steps you need for the first house and the fourth house, and then start working on the contours. So 
how do I start working on my contours? From our parking lot exercise, now we're between 70 and 71, for instance. We'll need to find where the top of the curb equals to 71, right? And that's where our 71 contour goes, uh, sorry, goes from the parking lot and then go along the curb and then it needs to come up somewhere, right? Now, you once you calculate your walkway, you would be able to know whether there is any segment of 71 on your walkway. There's likely, depending on how what the step look like here, I am at about 70 point something here, right? If you have a pretty steep walkway here, there might be a portion of your 71 on your walkway. You calculate that location and then you connect wherever the 70.5, the midway, the midway between these two contours, that's where your 71 above the curb connects and you connect these two lines to form your 71. That make sense? Yeah. Now your 69 is over here. So you again, look for the midway. So your 69 will likely go like that. Okay, you do the same thing. Okay, your 72 will come up in the middle somewhere here. And you'll need to decide whether or not you have any, you probably, you know, no, you don't have any 72 on this walkway. Uh, you don't have any 72 over here. So your 72 likely will hit the wall, hit the, hit the side of the wall here. And your 71 could be, there's a portion of 71 on your walkway, and then it hits the side of the building in that manner. Now you'll need to find where 70 comes up and that's your 70. Okay, you can you can make make this area a little bit you know, shall, you know, gentler by attaching the contour on the other side of the wall instead of on a closer. I mean, this this slope determines this slope determines the whether or not the area in front of the house is steep or not, right? So there is no exact or one single location for these contours. These contours will determine whether or not you have a relatively gentle front area or not. So, and we also went through, you know, how to do the 69 contours in this area. Again, you are off by one. So my, so this is 71, zero, 69, 68, that's 68. Okay, this is 68. So then uh, you, you work starting from the contours here. These are the relatively, you no, know, you, you know, you know that, well, you need to start with them. Then you would know if or not, for instance, you would have another contour in this area. Basically, you would need to maintain these areas to be above 2% so that they would drain. Does that make sense? So once I know where my 71 here and my 71 on the other side is, I would be able to determine on the ground and the brown line because without any contours, if this area exceeds 50 feet, this whole area will be too, too, too flat, not draining, okay? So that, you will measure 50 feet, measure 50 feet here and say, okay, I need another contour. Otherwise this whole area will drop below 2% and it won't drain, it doesn't work. So we need to, we need to make this area higher so that it could drain toward the parking lot. So you start with the blue line and then you move now gradually to the side. So this is 70 and then 69 is somewhere over here, somewhere over here. And then it could directly, you know, if you wanna do 69 connect, oh, well, it does, it, there's really not a great benefit to connect back to the 69 original contour. 
So we'll just say the whole thing here would be the, the, the little butte uh, in the original uh, topography will just be flattened. And then you'll need to look for where 68 comes out of the curve based on these dimensions. Uh, somewhere, it should be somewhere in the middle here. And then connect back to your 68 and then move gradually one contour by one contour. Um, it, it, this, these two areas, you don't necessarily have to create swells, okay? Um, but how exactly, where exactly each contour goes, now you need to decide if I want to have a basement over here. Well, you definitely could have a basement over here and there. You don't necessarily have to, it won't be too difficult to have a basement over here. So depending on whether or not you have basement, the walkout basement, um, those, the 66, for instance, the contours over here, you know, would attach the wall instead of being dragged up to form a swell, okay? I'm sure we will have submissions that had done some of the contours in the backyard, then I can, I can comment specifically on whether or not their contours are, move, are, 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 are drawn in the right direction. Once you get through to this side and that side, then the last, last piece is this, okay? Wherever the, these contours come out of the curve and, and, and then, you know, it will follow, the contour pattern will follow the original pattern. It's basically going like this, but where exactly those contours come out, you look for the halfway, okay? Halfway means, again, if you're here, I'm not going to repeat again, okay? These things, how do I find the 0.5? I basically draw a parallel line to my other contours. So this is the, for instance, if this is 69 and 68, the brown line that I just drew represents the parking lot plaza, the parking lot uh, spot elevation equals to 68.5, which means that is 69. Okay, that's where 69 would connect you know, on the curb. And then you'll look for where 69 is. Um, in, in, in this direction, in the west side, now look for halfway point somewhere here, and then that's where you connect your 69, okay? That's where you'll connect your 69. Follow the same rule to do every one of the contour in between, okay? After you worked out all the contours, then you start calculating the parking lot spots, okay? Calculate the spots as the final step. Or after you have your parking lot contours finalized. Once you have your parking lot contours finalized, you won't need to change your contours anymore. So when that at that point, calculating you, you won't needing, you won't be needing to revise your, your spots, okay, because they're solely determined by your parking lot contours. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, I'm gonna move forward. <clears throat> Jane? The student here? Is the student here? Okay. One forty is Sander. Okay, Sander, can you please unmute? Let me know you're here. I'm here. Okay. Should draining let be placed in these corners? That's right. Well, because that's the lowest depth corner. 
without a drain, the water will have nowhere to go. So that's correct. So there's no swell line. So this year, uh, we did not have any student work on a different solution. Well, I guess we did not recommend any student to work on the solution where there's a swell in the middle. I wanna say it's possible, okay? It's possible to have a swell in the middle, um, but this year, just because we recommended everyone to drain your water to the side, drain the water in this direction, so you'll be putting a retaining wall in the middle, okay, without creating a swell in the middle. But that doesn't say that doesn't mean that there can't not be a solution that does that, okay? There, there, it could work by creating swells in the middle. Essentially, it's the same thing. You would just have two swells that would converge in the middle, okay? So, what you have here, you have one of the contours. But you won't, you will also have other contours. Okay. If I'm zooming in, if I'm zooming in, you still need to draw in the 72 contour, meaning your 72 will come out somewhere here. And then there's another contour 72 come out of there. Okay, the, these two would be connected together. And then um, there are another contour in the middle, like this. Okay, so otherwise, if you only have 171, another a close to 72 here, another 71, this area is will be too flat. Okay, you need it, you need them to drain, so you would have two 72. Okay, 71, 72, another 72 on the curb. Um, water will drain this direction and that direction, and then you will have a wall in the middle, wall in the middle here. Okay, so let me try to comment on a few other things. I'm not convinced that these are calculated and you can't not have steps in front of every unit, okay? Because you sh have to de design two, at least two um, ADA accessible houses, right? So the middle, you would need to remove the, um, the the steps and then calculate the, the sidewalk to find out what kind of slope for the sidewalk you would be able to get to um, 72.03, okay? Now, I might recommend a design revision here just because, you know, it's going to be easier for you to calculate even if you want to you want it, uh, it to direct connect to your, the middle of the porch, that's okay too, okay? It's going to be easier for you to calculate the slope here for this sidewalk than for you to calculate every spot or the slope for every segment of your connected walkway. It is a better design anyway because you wouldn't want folks that live here to park here and then walk along the the parking lot and get up here and then go that way the the folks living there they definitely will just walk directly up to your house okay so that design de design revision is a better design also it will make your life easier calculating the sidewalk slope going up to your house okay so um your let's six six okay so the the difference between these these activities they seem to be um eight inches so that works you just need to calculate the slope and how many steps here remove steps here remove steps there calculate the slope of the sidewalk calculate the slope of the sidewalk verify how much steps you need here, and then work on your parking lot contours, finish them, and um, work on the, the these contours coming up. And I see that you have these contours that are at, in the right direction, that's correct. The next thing for you to verify 
let me go over this one more time, okay? So <clears throat> you have 70 over here. Um, you have about 70.2 over there and your 71 will come up somewhere here. Okay, that's your midpoint. Well, that midpoint, let's see. Let's see if that midpoint is correct. Let me move over here. Yes, that midpoint is correct, great. So the midpoint is correct. And then now we need to decide, again, as I explained to Shelly, submission, well, how you design the slope here, the slope of the sidewalk here determines whether or not you have a 71 on your walkway. Um, let's see, if it's 5%, uh, 72, well, let's, let's just do a quick calculation here. So if this is 70.2, which means top of the curve would be 70.7, you need, if it's 5%, then you need six feet to overcome 0.3. Okay, so it looks like if we design for the sidewalk to be 5%, which is a pretty high slope, you would have a, you would have a 71 contour you no know, landing on the sidewalk there. So let me, so basically, if we say six feet is over here, then your 71 contour lands on your sidewalk, your walkway in that manner, you would connect your 71 over there and then you would continue your 71 contour, okay? However you connect this, the, the last segment of the 71 is kind of flexible. You could do this if you want this area to be a little bit steep, that's okay. If you can, you can even attach that to the side here. Well, that generally creates a, a gentler front slope, but all these solutions, they're not wrong. Okay, so last segment, how you want it to attach, whether or not to the porch or to the side of the wall, to the other side of the wall, that's your choice. But what's not flexible is this segment, you need to calculate it, that connecting point, you, that's de uh, definitive, right? That's based on your parking lot contours here. So that's basically the process of determining once my contour 71, goes in front of the house, where should it go? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Let me um, try to zoom out and take a look if there's any glaring things that I need to point out. Okay, so you would not have a walkout basement over here just because your, your, your elevations here are too low compared to your the existing the existing is five over here if you want your 61 contour to be over here no take a look at where 61 is 61 is over there you sort of have to you know remove the whole thing and drag it up and your 60 um well it's 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 basically not creating even if you can drag it up to this location your 60 is not creating enough slope Okay, there's not enough slope for that area to, to, to drain. So here, if you want to have a basement, you would also have a wall. You will have to have a wall there. And so this will be an enclosed, an enclosed um, uh, basement or, or backyard where your five contour or six contour will hit the wall like that. Does that make sense? So no base no walkout basement for the last unit if you if you want to design a a a, uh, a backyard you have to use a retaining wall to enclose it all right okay that is higher than 62.17 so definitely not correct um, 62.67, you still have a, you still can have a walkout basement over there. 
So that should be okay. That should be okay. No, no walkouts over there. Okay, and then we, we still need to continue these contours, 69. There should be another 68 somewhere here. So we're missing two contours, four contours, um, including these uh, in the in the parking lot. After that, after working on these, continue to work on these contours, okay? And, and then move forward to the, these contours. And um, well, that's the last step. I forgot to mention, work on the side, but also work on here. Work on the, the, um, the contours uh, in your backyard as well. So Sandra, do you have additional questions about how to move forward? Do, do, you, kind, do, do, you, do you know the next step to work on the backyard, for instance? Yeah, I think I know where to go. I did okay. have one more question though. Um, sure. could, you, could you look at my cul-de-sac? Uh, is there any other lines that I need to add? No, for this one, um, if your calculations, okay, so this is the, no, this is this is all the contours you would have. But you you have a lot more spots later on to add to. Okay. Okay, so the contours are, are okay here. Um, let me quickly check if that's correct. Ah, too thick. These look like you calculated you calculated them correctly. Okay, well good. Okay, if not, I'll move forward. Yeah, I, I just saw these. So your building FFE seems appropriate, but um the steps in front of them, as I mentioned, some of them cannot um, cannot have steps. Okay, 141, Ella. Okay. So how do we get the 68? You mirror them. Uh, so the, the line here that you drew is not exactly perpendicular to the crown. You would modify that. So it goes through the center of the circle and then, but it's also perpendicular to the crown line. And then you use that as a mirror line, okay? So you would have something, something like this. Yeah. Not exactly. You can you if you yeah can come up and draw that so mm -hmm. oh okay 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 so so they had well depending on well let me. Let me do okay. So that's that's dependent on your distance there. So that's that. That's this one, and then there's another portion. If there's if if for instance the distance here is 50 feet, then you have another contour. So if that's exactly 50, let's see. Yeah, that's about 50. So you might have a small one there. That will look like this. because Just because all these will need to be the same slope that the, the unit, the same slope you designed elsewhere. Not 50, the same. Yeah, I, I, I misspoke. So not exactly 50, but the contour spacing would be the exact same as the other contour spacing, then 
you basically use the distance here to offset your the next contour and see if you have another contour over there. If you do, then that means you have a the same thing over here. It's essentially saying, no, beside on this side of my mirror line, everything is uniformly designed with the same slope, whatever the slope is. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. So good, good question. Okay. Let me wait, no clear. These are in the wrong direction. That's a crown. Uh, your parking lot contours. Well, let's check. If you did the four, yeah, they look like they are correct. Uh, that's the 2% for, yeah, this looks good. And can you show me how to get the contour lines for the curb? Okay. You got that, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's good. Um, but that, how would my 71 contour work? So 71 comes up here and it comes up in the middle somewhere here. So in your case, most likely we'll go that way. And then there's another one here. Mm -hmm. So you would be uh, deciding, so it, this one, you wouldn't have something over here. Your 71 comes up there. You don't have a 72. That's what I mean. Yeah. Just because, you know, here we're going down 0.25. That gets you BC equals to 71.26. So above the curve is 71.76, right? So you don't have a 72 on top of here. So you only have a 71 and 71 over there. And then very likely you have a 72 over here. Yeah. And uh, we did talk about these being too steep, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're too steep. So likely you're getting, going to add uh, steps for, for these. Well, We'll take a look all at all the FFEs. Yeah, I think I think there might. Yeah, they they're these are pretty high. If you if you don't want any steps, um, these it looks like every one of them would need steps. And if you need to get rid of steps, you get rid of these steps. So basically, you use five percent for this one and recalculate the FFEs in the middle. Okay. But but um, let me go through let look through the other questions and then we'll we'll spend some time on that. Yeah, swell lines. We talked about that one. Ah, come on. What's the next step? Okay, so let's talk about the FFEs. So in terms of FFEs, um, they're all 73 on the left side or 74 on the right side. So we talked about this one. It doesn't matter. You know, if you raise, if you raise the TFFE really high, meaning that you need to add steps, I wouldn't recommend that you add more than, so we're, we're about 70 here. Let's say we're at the 70.5 over here without any steps. We need six steps. That's what I think would be too much, okay? Now, if we, this one is for you to decide. You can say, I want a 2% slope. I want three steps. And then based on this, however you calculate, that's your TFFP. Because the bottom FFP doesn't matter that much, just because we don't need a walkout over here. Yeah, So so then this one would have steps. Okay, would have steps, would have no uh, walkouts. And then if we look at this one, we're about, again, we're about 70 here, 70.5 over there. So that means this needs steps as well, which means 
these two, these two in the middle cannot have steps. So if they cannot have steps, you would say, I'm just going to do a 5%, calculate from here 5%, whatever it gets me to my TFFE, that's my TFFE. OK, so these two will be will be dropped. Yeah, even if you drop it, you still would be able to make this work. Yeah, and then that one, you would be able to make it work as well. The, the last thing you do need to check is whether or not the differences between these houses, the FFEs are in the increments of eight inches. Once you, once you get that down, your FFEs are done, okay? So the next thing, okay, I see that most of your parking lot contours are, are done. And, and yeah, right. So then you start connecting these contours, right? Connecting these con these contours, I would I would work on the walkway uh, and 70, 71, 72 contours first, and then I decide how do I connect these, and then using that I decide how do I connect the backyard. We do need a, 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 a retaining wall. Yes, yeah. We we work on the back contours and we come back to these contours and these contours. And then we calculate or we uh, specify the spot elevations. That's the that's the, basically the steps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any 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 other questions? You would you can have three here. You can have three here. For instance, um, let's, let's zoom in. Where's my, huh? Hey, okay, now I have it. So let's suppose that we dropped, we dropped the FFEs by two. If we say we have 72.36, oh, I need to. I need to zoom out a little bit to see the contours. And the bottom would be 63.36. So I come out uh, to the yard here would be 63.36 and my next contour would be 63, right? So if I design for 2% slope, this is 18 feet away. I measure 18 feet away, I get my 63 contour here. Now I need to think about, okay, where is my 62? Okay, um, here is zero, one, two, three, meaning my 63 is broken between this and that. And that means I need a wall to attach my 63, well, if I'm, I'm also moving the other contours, that's okay too. I can just attach my 63 like this. Does that make sense? Yeah, my 63 would be broken starting from here and connecting to the 63 over here, but I need to get down to here, which is which could, could be difficult. So that in that case, I will, I will need a wall. So I need to drag my 63 up and then attach the wall. And then my next one is the 62. This one is the one that I don't need to move, right? This will stay. And I do need to verify whether or not this is 50 feet so that I know that is sufficient slope. If it's too far away, then I need to raise my bottom FFE a little bit, okay? So that's how we attach the 63 and then 64 wouldn't be needing, well, 64 is also going to be attached to the wall there. 65 can go up a little bit more, 66 can do that. Okay, so that's that's two very different scenarios where you don't have a walkout, where you have a walkout um, and, and you need to determine what's the next contour out of your basement 
and then verify you have enough distance or or not, not too big of a distance next to the contour below in this case would be 62 yeah and that's that's how you decide where the wash should start and end 18 feet away it's two percent slope out of the basement there but that's no that's assume our our ffes are these numbers if you're yeah, if your numbers change, you will you will use those numbers to calculate the, the specific distance there, okay? Yep. Fix the FFEs. Fix the FFEs. Work on the contours in front of your homes, beside your homes, at the back of your homes, and then move to the other side of the parking lot. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. Is there a command to make a forty? You can you can draw the crown line and then rotate it by forty five degrees. Okay, that's how you do that one. Um, how would I start the steps? You would basically use this line. Use this line and offset, right? Offset by one foot. That's your your steps to that direction. Okay. Um, how to find this spot and behind the house? Do I need to draw the sixty three? Uh, we can go through the backyard over there. Once I read through all the comments where the contour come up the curb halfway. So the seventy one. How do I calculate where the contour hits the ramp? Okay, and find this elevation. Well, we'll just we'll just go. Yes, you do need to do well. Let's let's work on this part first. So, how do we calculate the contours um, on the walkway? You would have a top of the curve and bottom of the curve elevation there, right? Um. So if my porch FFE is 71.83, you do, well, now we're getting into pretty much the details that the slope here will be slightly different from that slope. Does that make sense? You could label max. You don't need to label both, you could label max. So let's suppose, you know, well, using, if you have already verified your porch FFE, 71.83 would be able to make the overall slope of the walk lower than 5%. Ah, sorry. That is 71.83, that is 71.83 there. Then based on this spot and that spot, the spot and that spot, you do know these two slopes, right? And then using that two slopes, you calculate where 71 is located. It's going, to, yes, it's going to be closer to the 70.85 than to the 70.60, right? It could be looking like that. So that may be what it looks like. And then your 71 goes like this. Your 70 goes like that. And then in the mid, middle way is where you connect them. So basically you do that. And then here you can directly make it hit the porch, hit the side of the porch. And be, once you, if you, you, you say, okay, my, this counter will hit the porch in this way. And that one will be below 71, the ground elevation. That makes sense because it's on the lower side of this counter. Yeah, so this is the ground. Right, yeah. So you can estimate. You can estimate based on, for instance, this one will be even lower than that one just because it's further away from that contour, right? But if you say, I want a very gentle front porch area, I want to do this. 
then this one will be slightly above them one. So those decisions are so those decisions are your yours. Um, and then if you want this to be 71.33, you would you would draw the contours like that and then do that. Right? Yeah. All right. So that's the front contours. Well, the contour come off the curb halfway. We just went through that. Yeah, you do have a 72 over here. And that's going to connect this way. Uh, 71 there. Then you have another 72 over here, okay? 71 goes like that. 70 somewhere here. And then, you know, those contour will look like that. Okay. How do I calculate? Yeah, we did mention that one. Uh, let's let's move to the side here. Okay, so this won't be as high as 65, as you may already know. That is 62.83. Now, just rep, no, uh, replicate what I explained to Ella just now. We're looking for where 62 is, right? So the next contour is 62. And you would measure how much? 41.5 feet to get to where 62 is. Does that make sense? So the next contour is 62 here. So the 62 contours, the first contours that comes out of your basin, because here you have 62.83. Okay, so the next contour is 62. And your original contour 62 is over here. So you kind of have to break it down between these and then connect. But no, we're not in a hurry to connect that just yet. We want to look around to the left side and to the right side and see how, how we connect them, right? So now if we look at this one, this is 65, that's 65, and we're looking for 64, right? So I'm going to use a different color. 64 will be 50 feet away if we want to design, well, at most six, uh, 50 feet away. You can decide my porch doesn't need to be that big. I can go 2% over 10 feet for my porch and then I can go, go deeper. So it doesn't have to be 50 feet away, but you can um, basically uh, in cross section would be, you know, I have my basement, basement over here. I go 2% and then I drop, right? I'm trying to decide where 64 is. This is 65, 64. You could specify how much you want to go for 2% and then how much you want to go for the rest of the slope. So that, that's possible. So let's suppose 64 is over here. Now between 62 and 64, you can see I definitely have that, right? So that, that wall needs to be there. That's my wall. Ah, I need to use the black. That's my wall in between. Um, what about here? Do I want to drag 62 over? No, up from. I can do. I can do this, and then I can have a um, 63 hitting the wall. So, yeah, actually, in this case, you would need the 62 to hit the wall. That's pretty long. But again, you don't need the whole thing to be 2%. 62 can be moved forward. If I say my pavement line, my porch ends here, my porch ends here, and then I suddenly drop using a steeper slope. So my 62 can actually move up, you know, if I have a steeper slope over there, right? So then then your wall don't don't need to be as long as what we had there, then that one can can be shortened. Um, and then 62 would basically go up and then attach to the wall there. Um, again, we need to create a positive drainage away from the wall. And then 63 will go up like that. And in this case, it does look like 
we would there's a possibility of, of forming of forming a swell okay now 64 we still need to find a way for 63 to hit the wall so there's a 63 coming that's zero one two three that's two and three is over here so maybe yeah the three needs to come over here and then hit the wall and then that would be extended a little bit okay and you already know that uh yeah that that wall needs to happen and my 64 is over here and then it probably can just hit that okay all right so that is how you work starting from one backyard but you look to the left and to the right and then decide what's the best way to connect across the the, the area okay so we went through that Same thing here, you have 64. Next contour will be 64. It's actually very close to where you are. Your 64 is pretty close. Um, your 66 is hitting the wall. The only thing that I say now you need to change would be the angle of those contours. The angle of these contours, you need to form positive drainage, okay? Well, actually, you know, if you wanna avoid moving 66 too much, you could start somewhere here. Now I'm just gonna hit the wall like that. And then my 65 goes up and then goes like that. If I don't want my wall to be too long, right? Um, and my 64 will be, you know, if, if I want to, let's change the color, 64 over here. That's my 64. So then that does mean my wall needs to be a little longer. So my 64 could come up here and then attach there. Yes. Yeah. No, you can go, you can go, you can go for a 10 foot one. So Right, that's your porch line, the black, you know, that's too thick. But basically this is your pavement line. Yes, yeah, 10 feet and then, okay. I think I went through everything, anything else? Okay, all right. Okay. Why did I click that? So Brady, can you unmute? Let me know you're here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um. Um. I'm not. Okay, so the blue lines are the other contours. Yeah. And how did you determine? How did you determine the contours? Did you determine your contours in your parking lot? How were how were the um the Ball elevations in the parking lot calculated. Uh, I don't know if I did them right. Yeah, um, these are likely too low because we're at 69 over here. That would be about 71. So the FFEs are too low. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the right process were followed in creating the draft here. Um, so the first thing you do, you use a 2% slope to 
to calculate the highest point over here and use the highest point over here to, and this given spot as the low point to calculate the second slope over there. Once you have these two slopes, you work on the tick marks between these, you know, along the crown to find where 70, 71, and 72, for instance, where these um, tick marks for the integer contours are. And then you would work on the contours of the parking lot and you would calculate the connection point to your house. And then you specify a walkway to the house and use 2% or up to 5% to calculate what your F at ease would be and then see whether or not you have a accessible front porch or walkout basements. So that's the process of determining whether you have uh, your FFEs work. Once you have that, you work on the contours in front of the building, in front of the building, beside the building, beside the building, behind the building, and then come back to the side here, okay? So that's the process of, and I'm not sure, uh, my sense is that you have to start from the beginning. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that, that does. Okay, well, if you have additional questions, if you worked a little bit more during the class, have additional questions, come back to Zoom, unmute and let me know. And that's, that, that's, that's basically the, the process. Without you know, having the crown slope, I wouldn't be able to help much to make progress right here, okay? Okay, I'll do All that. All right, yeah, I am going to move forward. Nothing. Okay. Okay. See contours. We see a swell. We see some of the contours in the back. Okay. Cool. We need to work a little bit more on the contours in front of the building and the contours over here. Uh, well, some of them are pretty good. Um, well, we're missing, uh, well, uh, let's see, probably not missing another contour in the middle. Uh, the calculation here seems a little off to me, but we'll, we can talk about that. How should that, do we need a drain? Yeah, we need drain here. We need drains over here. And uh, to our buildings, does this setup work? We can take a look, okay. So let's take a look at the back first. So we have 64.5, cool. We have, so that's the four contours there. Same thing, that's 64. Well, they're not at eight inch increments. That's the first thing that we need to adjust, but that shouldn't be a major problem. One, two, three, four. That's the four, contour fourth. That's the, um, yeah. I kind of get up, I, I get why you have these spots um, stepped in five, a point five difference. 64, 65. Okay, let's see, how can we, hmm. So Matt, I, I'm not sure you have all the front porch accessible at this moment. Uh, if this is 72, that seems to me quite, um, 
Yeah, that calculation seems a little off. Let's see. If 71 is over here. Hmm. The angle of that contour looks vicious. Yeah, can you see the big bottom of the curve? Probably not correct. Um, let's see. To reduce, redo, what do we? disappeared again. Come on. Ah, not like how you behave today. Well, then you change to a different one. I do the battery. So if I were to draw. So I think you did 0.2. Well, that's not exactly 0.25 either. So unfortunately, the contours in the parking lot are off. Hopefully, that's not too much damage. Um, let's do a quick. Okay, so more likely is this direction. So that's the direction there. And then if we do this, here would be about 71.25. So your top of the curve over here will be 71.75 PC. And then if you go up for 1.5, we're about, you know, well, the FFE here, 73.50 seems still quite reasonable. Um, so yes, you would need to, well, the quickest, let me say the quickest thing to come up with your parking lot contour is always going to be like this, right? What, what I did just now. You know, we, we connect a line at the end of the, well, by the edge of the driving aisle, the, the red line here. Okay, the red line here, we project a line from the 70 perpendicular to this red line. And then I divide this line into four. The reason being, no, the crown height is one fourth, right? So this, this here we have 69.75, right? And here we have 70.75. If we divide by fourth, exactly this location, you'll get 70. That's the fastest way of coming up with where the connection point is. Does that make sense? So for everybody that needs to fix your, your parking lot contours, use this procedure. Use this procedure and then your parking lot contour will definitely be the correct direction and then mirror it. Okay, once you get one side, mirror it. Okay, for the other one, it's the same. Okay, so fix that first. It still seems it's very likely the FFE of 73.775 would work. Now, in that case, what my recommendation would be, now keep this, keep this one. You can make this one the same, okay? Make this one the same. Making it higher is not, help, is not that helpful just because I'm lower here. I'm lower here, I'm shorter here for the sidewalk. So I'm not able to raise as much as what I did here. So naturally, if I don't have any steps, 
this one will be lower than what I have here, right? So if I, I keep raising it, I will make, I'll create more steps than necessary. I understand what you, you are trying to do is I want, you want this, this one to be higher than that one. And here will be the same as this one. I kind of, I, I get, I get that intention, but that could be solved by a wall in between. Okay, it could be solved by a wall in between. We don't necessarily have to connect these two lines if you, if you don't want to. Make, make these the same would totally, would totally be fine. Um, or you can make this one even uh, eight inches lower. Eight inches lower and then the use of the, um, the retaining wall will make even more sense just because I'm lower here and I'm higher here and then I definitely need, to, need a wall there. Okay, so keep that one. And I, I, I think you can keep this one. And that one, you could say, starting from here, 5% slope, two steps, what get me, uh, what, what, what will be the, the elevation at the bottom? Even if you want to keep the 74 here, it's not wrong. It is not wrong because, you know, it just means I need to, you know, take a, a few more steps in the front. But the design of that unit, that house, it's going to sell a little harder because it has steps and it doesn't have a basement, right? So the amenities there, if you, if you want to say, um, I'm going to sacrifice my, well, if you want to say, I have many steps in the front, but I have a walkout basement, then you kind of cancel off, right? You offer some benefits you know, with some sacrifice of the front access. In fact, with a 65 over here, you would be able to create a, a walkout basement just by dragging 64 up. Does that make sense? So if, if we have a walkout basement over here, it makes more sense to create steps. If we don't have a walkout here, I don't need steps in the front. That's just, for, that's just design, kind of design recommendations. It's not wrong. Yeah, it's just, it could be a better design. So if, it, if you're at 65 over here, right? What, what we're trying to do is we're, uh, this one doesn't need to be the, the 0.5 below because all the house, no, the basement are, are um, retaining walls. They can serve as retaining walls, okay? So I can make this 65 because you no know, lowering it make it harder to connect. So I'm just gonna make it 65 and then I'll, I'll Measure 50 feet, ah, sorry. I'll measure 50 feet and that's my 64. Okay, that's my 64 contour. And I'll just need to figure out how I connect back to my 64 over here, right? And I do that using a, 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 a wall, right? I'm just gonna drag it up. And the wall needs to be a little longer. Does need to be pretty long. And then it makes it easier for me to connect my, well, there is a 10 feet of offset from the property line. And then I kind of have to do it like that. It's not a beautiful solution, but it, it can be done. Now, if you want to you know, raise this even higher, then it's even easier for you to create that walkout basement. Basically your, 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 your 65 will just be dragged up um, 66, it may also be like that, 67, no, so, so on, so forth. In that case, if you want to create a walkout basement, you do need to modify that. But now, no, the current, the, what you currently have works, except for the last contour of 64. Okay. The last contour of 64 needs to go up just a tad. Well, you're well. You not don't necessarily have water draining onto your wall, so 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 it's it's okay. It's just borderline okay. Yeah, turn a little bit, then your sixty four works fine. You have sixty four over here. Your sixty three might be a little too far away from your sixty four. You need to measure this for it to be. If it exceeds a sixty uh, fifty feet, then you need to move sixty three up a little bit. Okay. So that's your backyard. All right. OK. 
Okay. So, how should the contours interact with the walkways? We kind of went through the calculation. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. These contours would not stay in the original location anymore, right? We will have um, 71 coming up somewhere here. Again, you need to outline where your walk is, the walkway, the walkway. Then you now for this one, I would I would basically connect it like that because that accurate angle, if I am coming up here, I would not go and turn and come back to my house, right? So I would basically just change, uh, change it to this design. And using that, I know 71 comes up here midway. Suppose that your original, your original contours are correct. It comes up here, right? But you do need to you revise your contours and then find where midway is. So in that case, your 72, uh, 71 would be here. Your 71 and 72 might just cross the sidewalk over here for a little bit. There's not much of 72 and 71 on your walkway here per se. Does that make sense? Um, well, let's zoom in. I know that could be a little, well, let's change to the correct contours anyway. We, we still have some time today, so. Okay. <clears throat> we do this, we do that. We do this, divide, put in. Contour, we'll do that, then do that. Okay. And my midway point, I'll climb up here. If that's the case, I might have a portion of my 71 on this walkway. How do I calculate that? So you would know once you specified your walkway, for instance, my walkway is over here. The 70 kind of um, will go along the curb and come back and come out here, right? So on top of the curb, there and there, the TC would be, here will be probably 70.4 and here 70.55, okay? And if the slope here is 5%, now, about six or eight feet away, you have your 71 on your on your walkway. It's actually a little bit tilted like that because here you have a, a, a oh, actually, the other way around. That's higher. This is lower. If the slope is the same, well, depending on how, well, depending on how you, how you, um, specify your slope there. I mean, so if you want the slope to be different, you could, you, well, I'm sorry. It's been a long afternoon. <laughs> okay. Eventually, I mean, organize my, my words here. Eventually you get to the to same elevation at the end of your walk, right? So this is kind of the same as your project one driveway calculation. You calculate, you, you, you have this spot, you have that spot, you have this spot, you have that spot. Because the lower spots here are different, you would have two different slopes. Does that make sense? The, the pink line, the black line are different. The black one is deeper. The pink one is shallower. Using that slope, you will be able to calculate where 71 is on your walkway, right? So your walkway 
you would have a portion of the 71 on your walkway. Uh, let's see, that is deeper. So it would look something like this, okay? And then this is where 71 comes up from the curve, which means I connect like this, right? And then once out of that, I could say I wanted to hit the side of the curve. That's okay. I can do, I want it to be gentler. So I want to hit the wall like that. Or I could say I want it to be even more gentler in, in the front area, then I can wrap it around, right? So those are a few different ways where you can attach your 71. But your 71 essentially goes like this. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah, so that's how you calculate that one. Okay. All right, anything else? Did I miss anything? Oh, oh, right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you all, the, the, the one that you connected uh, uh, was actually good. Come on. So, if, for instance, I'm moving it halfway to here, you can see that you have two different connection points. All right, you would have, you know, if I move it away, you would have a portion here. And then you would have another portion out of there. That's where you connect. That's 71, right? 71, there's another 71 over here. I move it over midway, that's correct. That's the correct connection point. Yeah, you could you could basically say I'm just gonna stop here and connecting to original contour. Yeah, so that's good. The 72 is also correct. Yeah, you come out from here and oh that one, that connection is not it's not. So let's again move it halfway. Okay. Move it halfway. Uh, maybe, maybe not, not off that much. So that's where it connects, it comes up from here to there. So then you would not connect back to original contours anymore. Yes, connects where wherever the halfway contour hits the curve, right there. Okay, so that, that's your 72. Um, and then you have this one, looks like it's close. Again, you have two portions, okay? The other one comes out here instead. You have a little bit, you have a little bit over here, and then you have another portion comes out of here. Ah, come on. Comes out of here and then connect to the original contour. Um, where 72 is over here, that's the 70. 70 comes out somewhere here. And you need to connect your 70, this one, to this here. OK. All righty. I'll, I'll move forward then. All right. Yeah. Jaden. OK. So I see a 2% slope. I see a 3.64% slope, um, 72. Mm, this is borderline. I'd say this is borderline because, oh, okay. If you calculate using 2% slope, then I would say, okay, no problem. Uh, just I just remember this one to be 35 foot, 0.7, 0.37 or 0.33 difference hmm, seems to be a little too small. Okay, questionable. Um, what I meant, 
what I meant was a 2% slope. Suppose this is 35 foot, you would go up 4.7, okay? If your top of the curve is 71.67, adding 1 1.5, you are at 72, no, no, 73.1. So that's why I, I think this is low. Okay, double check, double check to make sure your actual, this is actually 71.67 and the 2%, 35 foot. Um, if this is too low, use these calculations at to your 71.67 you should get a 73.1, something like that. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, here, I think what happened was you added 0.8. It's actually 8 inches. So you add 0.67. You know, if, if you want to have a difference between this one and that one, we're not adding 0.8, we're adding eight inches, which is 0.67 foot, okay? So that's that one. Um, here you would need steps, okay? Steps will be necessary. Steps will be necessary. 73, mm, yeah, 73 might work here. Yeah, this one, this one should work. That one is too low. You need to raise that one. Uh, you can keep these, you can keep these, but you will need to add steps, okay? Um, I think we, sorry. You don't necessarily have to raise them. You could make the same. If you want to them to be different, then their differences have to be integer times of or in in the in the um, interval of eight inches, okay. How would I go about changing the slope? I'm not exactly sure what you meant by changing the slope between buildings. We can go higher than that. We can go um, two to two to five there. Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, honestly, if we basically just do this calculation for this one and that one, these two houses will give you the walkouts, will give you the accessible front porch. And these two, you know, you just have to add one set of steps because we ask you to design a set of steps, okay? Otherwise, you don't necessarily have to raise them. Um, Sure. No, not necessarily. So Yes, yeah. So so here you have you have walkout basement, right? For these ones, you have to drag the contours up. So here we, we have 63. So we have to make sure we connect to 62. And 62 is right here. Now, 62, you don't even have to change 62 in this case, you know, because um because this is less than 50 feet. So 62 can stay the same, can stay, can stay where they are, but now you do need to find a way to separate the 63. Now the wall needs to extend that much so that I, I have a way to attach 63. Because here is lower than, than uh, the 63 we designed here is, is lower than the 63 around it. So in this case, you only need, you only need the wall to be here so that you can attach 63. You don't even have to change your 62 in that case. But here, 
Uh, if you need a walkout basement, we're at 63.8. Uh, three needs to be somewhere. If three is here, then you need a wall in that area. Does that make sense? So separate to, because your 63 is basically along the side of the building. So 63 needs to be cut off by the wall, right? So the spot elevations around the building will wait until you have your contours, right? So suppose that uh, I have my, uh, let's see, you are at 71 here. 71 will probably go some something like this. 70 will go like that. Then you can see the spots over here would be slightly above 70, Ooh, uh, let's see. That's one, that's that's zero. That's actually 70, 70 point something here. Does that make sense? You would estimate that based on their relationship to the next contour, but you don't know them. You don't know them based on FFP. You, you well, okay. You don't specify them based on your FFP. You determine or you estimate them based on your design contours in front of your houses, okay? So not yet. They have to be at least 0.5 below your FFE. That's the only thing we know without designing for the contours first, okay? Am I able to use a different slope than 2% for between the building? Yeah, yeah, I think we, we addressed that one. We addressed this one, 2.5 would be okay. That would be okay, but we do have to move forward having the contours, otherwise we don't know where the contours are in front of the building. So again, that will will wait until you have this. You know, you, once you have that, and once you have this design, then you will know where my swell, or if if or not, I I should I could use a swell there. Same thing over here. Without the contours, you know, you wouldn't be able to know where your swell go. Or even, you know, most likely you don't have to design two swells. Okay. So if you, um, if you follow what I explained to a couple of folks before, it's, it's determined by what this look like, right? If, if, if the, for instance, if I don't need to walk out over here, I don't need, and I don't need a, a swell at all because I don't have as many contours or I don't have a steep side that I have to direct water away. Most likely I'll, I'll just be able to use sheet flow to direct water away. The same case here. If I need to design a walkout over here and the contours or, or the, uh, the elevations are pretty low, then I would have a lot of contours that I need to drag up and attach the wall. At that point, the swell becomes necessary, okay? If I only have a few contours going like this and hitting the wall and these contours go like that, you can apparently see there's no, no, no need for swell in that area, right? So it's based on here and here, whether or not you have many contours, a steep side that you need to direct water away from that retaining wall, okay? Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, let's let's work on the parking lot contours. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's work 
a little bit more on the, the, the FFEs of this one and that one because that they are 0 0.8 instead of 0 0.67 above the other two FFEs. After that, we should work on the front, okay, the side, the back, and then come back to the side. Okay? Yeah. All right. Eric. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Spot elevations needs to be a little bit bigger. It's hard to see. Um, high point too high. Well, you have a pretty steep area. It's not wrong. It's not wrong, so I don't I don't recommend going starting over and changing to a, a, a smaller slope. I would I would use these numbers and, and keep working on them. Um, that's too low. This one, yeah, this one is also low. Yeah. Um, contours whether I I would I would do the other way around. I would reduce the hierarchy of your pavement. Okay, your contours look okay, but your uh, your pavement seems a very prominent. Um, contours and building boundaries needs to be the, the most prominent features uh, that pops out of your page. So does this ramp, does ramp have to be in line with the ADA ramp? Well, you can move you can move that hashed uh, parking lot anywhere you want. So it doesn't have to be in the location that we gave you. So let me check. Give me a second. Yeah. They seem a little off to me, but no, they're close enough. Maybe it's it's just I'm not able to to measure uh, very accurately on this. But verify your contour directions one more time, just to be sure. Okay. Um. Overall, most of you, well, you you. Uh, your parking lot contours are in a good shape. Um, what needs to be so? For instance, here I would I would move it to the middle point, so you can kind of see that connection is not correct. Right, the connection needs to happen here. Right. Oh, sorry. Connection needs to happen over here. Yeah, and the same the same goes same goes here. Now you move over there. Ah, that's correct. That's correct. So double check, double check these connection points, especially when there is a irregular shape of the curve. Um, sixty nine needs to be mirrored over. Well, ah, yeah. Hmm, that's a little hard. I mean, what I meant was if you recalculate from here to there and the slope exceeds 5%, then we're, we, have an, we have an issue. Then it becomes too steep, okay? Hopefully, when you use the 68 over here and 74 over there, you will get a, a slope that's lower than five, if I have, if we have one more day, I would recommend that yes, let's lower the, the parking lot slope. Well, use your judgment and see how much time you have. Um, if you have some time, if you if you think redoing because you know the process already, if you think redoing the parking lot counter will not not set you back too much, then go ahead and do that. Okay.
you would lower your slope. Yeah, lower your slope. So you would lower your HP over here. Lower this one to be two. Use 2%, calculate this one, and then calculate that one. Then um, if there's no if there's no error here, I wouldn't I wouldn't say change your thing. But now there's an error here, and then there's a possibility for this to be even more than 44.4. And because your TFFE here are low. So there's enough change that you need to make to make it worth changing even more thoroughly. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So TFFE for two units in the middle, definitely too low, okay? Because we're going down here. We're going down there. Um, in this case, we don't need to shape the swell. We can do this. But the key thing is actually the angle of that contour. We just want to make sure that this is positive range there. Does that make sense? OK. So it seems like you have a good understanding of this area and that area. Um, things that are not quite there yet is the area in between, OK? So your 72 will go out there, 73, might have a 74 over here, 72, you would have a 74. If, if, if this is still that high, 74 is actually over here instead of, uh, you're missing a 74 here. 73 still goes out there, two, three, oh no, a two, one, zero, come back. So that's actually going to tie back to the other side of the wall. There's probably too many. You can you can start seeing you can start seeing that these slopes are pretty high. Okay, so it's worth making those changes. But that's essentially your, your pattern um, of the contours in front of the buildings. And then wall here, ah, wall here. Okay. Yeah, so Eric, um, first thing, work parking lot contours. Second thing, work uh, contour in front of the building. Third, would you would work on these contours in the back, okay? And you know, modify some of the connection points over there. And then last, you work on the spot elevations. Yeah, these contours don't seem don't seem correct. So if your, for instance, if your seventy comes out here, and connect, well, it might be not turning, but it might be like this. Then your sixty nine would actually be in the middle like that, okay? Then you have to look into what these contour look like. That's not going to be 67 anymore. This is still going to be 69. 69 could be a closed contour. It could be coming out on the other side. So you have you, have, you would have two 69s. Um, that would go back over to connect that direction, okay? And then 68 will essentially be going up, you know, connecting like that. And 67, something like this. Now you don't have to have a walkout basement over here. So these contours seven, six, and five can attach to a wall. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to go through? Oh, we're, we're flipping the contours, right? We're not going down all the way. We're going up. Yeah, otherwise, when you turn, you would, if you're prone to, to having an accident with a, a downward slope. Yeah, left turn, you have to have your right side to be higher than your left side, okay? So we're going down over here. Your contour will be, you will flip Flip that 69 wherever the 69 is. 
Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Melanie. Okay. first portion of the parking lot contours um well once you get to the side these are not correct yeah yeah so you probably connected to, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to say what happened, but this side looks, looks good. But I'm not exactly sure why what, the turning is, is, is actually helping with either the drainage. Well, you can, you can, if you want to turn it, you would turn it like that, right? Yeah. So this portion, as I mentioned to others, you know, the, the easiest way would be draw a rectangle like this and then divide it into fourth, right? Divide into fourth and that last one wasn't very evenly drawn. Now your contours would look like that if you don't do the W. Does that make sense? Yeah, so so that's that's if you don't do the W, then that's that. If you do the W, I'll just mirror that. That's the W. Okay. Yeah. So our first step is to fix the parking lot contours first. And then um, your TFFEs are pretty high. I would say lower these two down so that you don't have to have steps in front of the homes. Okay, these needs to be lowered down. That you can solve by having steps. Um, so if we make sure that at least there are two houses that doesn't have any steps. So these two you no, know, you have a very high slope here. And then this is over 35 foot. So this needs to be uh, you know, lowered down to five. Once you lower that down to five, you calculate here and here. So 5% using the, the, the top, top of the curve over here and 5% slope for the walk you get down, you get your FFEs, and then that's your, whatever number you, you get for these two spots would be your FFEs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for two of the units, you cannot, for two of the houses, you cannot have any steps just because the wheelchair needs to roll up, right? Roll up and directly into the homes. So there's no steps for these two houses in the middle. Um, that might get you to about 63. Yeah.
the outer ones, the outer ones, if you make TFFD equal to 75, well, you don't have to have a walkout basement for these outer ones, right? If you want to have them, then at least this one needs to be 63 because this is zero that cannot be moved. There's a lot of room here to have your 61 and 62. So that at least needs to be 62.5. I'd say my estimate is as long as it's higher than 62.5, you should be able to make it you no know, walk out. Yeah. It, it should work if you, yeah, if you want to have a walkout there. This one, you don't have to have a walkout. Uh, this is the kind of the same situation with uh, as what Matt has, right? For for this one, if you are designing for a walkout, you sh yeah, 66, yeah, here you are at a 66. Um, there are probably too many steps in front that needs to make, uh, you need to make too many steps in the front to make this happen. It's about about eight steps. So that's a lot, uh, that's a, a lot to sacrifice for having a walkout. Uh, if you are at, for instance, even if you're at a 65.5, you should be able to have a walkout there. It doesn't have to be as high as 66.37 because your 65 is over here, right? The only thing you cannot move is, is actually the 63. Now, suppose we have four here, and you can you can be at 65 and you can have a walkout. But that also means that also means you would have a lot of contours that will be attached over here. That makes sense. So the first thing you would need to attach five and six and seven and then eight. So so that's that's what you're trying to create. That's a long retaining wall that you will need to create to make this a walkout. Yeah. So if this is not a, if you don't have to have a walkout, then it's very, it's, you just need to attach these contours to this wall. So basically six, five can go here, six, six can go there. 67 can attach the wall like that. You don't have to have anything, anything like a, a swell to make this one work. All right. So I don't recommend doing a walkout there just because you'd you'd have to create a really long retaining wall and create a swell on the site to make it work. Yeah, if you want to, you know, we can have a enclosed, enclosed backyard, which means all these are retaining walls. So inside here is, is well, but the contours could hit the wall just like that, you know, just like this. And then this one would go like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it's, it's too much cost to try to, to try to create a walkout basement for the last unit. You'd have to have many steps in the front. You'd have to drag a lot of contours from the backyard. You'll need a long retaining wall. You'll need a swale on the side. The swale would need to be pretty steep. So that's all the costs associated with creating a walkout basement for the last unit. Yeah. These two are easy to create walkout basements. Yeah, because, you know, because these are, we, we don't have any trees, right? All these, you can, you can move, up. all these, you can move up. Even if you are at 63, it's pretty easy to make it work. No, that's 71, oh uh, no, 60. No, one could be here, two could be here, even, this, even at 62, you might be able to make it work. Yeah, you, we would just have a pretty long wall, that's it. So <clears throat> suppose we are at 63 here. BFFE equals to 63. 
what I have, my, my contour out of the basement is 62, right? And now, honestly, my 62 can stay here. I don't need to move. But, um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just need to have a wall here so that I can have 62 attached there. My 62 don't even have to move. So as low as as low as 63 for the for the units in between, the FFE would would work. Same thing here, yeah. If I don't I don't move this one, that's 62, right? My 63 would likely need to be here. So for this unit, as long as I'm above 63.5, I would make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're um we're likely going to well you need to decide if you have a, a contour here. That will give you what the spot here is. You minus four, you get the contours here. If for instance, if we're at 73 over here, then we will be at 69 bottom of the wall on the other side of the wall. So then if this is my 60, that's my 63, not moved, right? And then that's my 63, I can, I can connect there. I don't need the wall unless I want to have a 64. Well, let me go back and say, if I want to have my 64 just connecting right there, I need that wall, right? So my four doesn't move. My four is the same as the four. That's my four. I'll just need to figure out eight, seven, six, five. I can make it evenly distributed. There are 25%, and I, I don't think we will exceed that at all in this area. Yeah, but, but you can see things are connected. There is a sequence to work through the process. Once you have these contours, you know the spots there, then you know the bottom spots here. Once you work on the backyard, you have this contour there, you know my four stays, the, stays in the original location, then I know there's one, two, three, four contours that I'm gonna design in the middle space. Yes, yeah, focus on this one first. Focus on that one, not that one, possibly this one, yeah. And then these two are definitely the easiest to create, okay? All right. That's, that's about it. Okay, I am... Double checking. All right, I'm not the. I'll go. Leave the room.